Wade down to a finish on throw first. Veinig needs to register something big here to just give him one or two reminders, but Wade... 140. Just going about it, isn't he, so effectively at the moment. He's not looked troubled at all, really. Just that little wobble, maybe in leg five, which he would anyway. 60. Where he missed those darts at double 20. A little bit of a wobble there as well, though. Many people would go for the bullseye with the last start in that combination, but I think James is more comfortable having 101 than 96. That's great work on the bullseye from Lucas. But these are the kind of finishes that James Wade has made a career of. And there Get it is shot. once again. He's within one leg of getting very, very close to Blackpool. Certain people have got to do mountainous things today. But if he wins and Dutz loses on the other board, the rest of the field have got to make the final match today. So, 58. if you believe in trends, maybe it doesn't board well for the English. However, it doesn't board well for Kevin Dutz because he's lost to Steve Beaton. He's not going to Blackpool this year. After being in a spot yesterday, he has fallen out of the spots and now he might need a hug. Yeah, well, James Wade is not there yet. Something could yet happen, but it's looking very good indeed for James Wade. Looking to return to the Winter Gardens once again. And 60. Yeah, when he comes out of this match, irrespective of the outcome, he'll be learning the news of events elsewhere, but he'll want to just uh, make sure that he finishes this one off in style. He's got six darts, well, one three more darts from here. Tell you what, Rob, if you want some more news, how about the fact that Dom Taylor is 5-2 up on Dirk van Dijvenborde? Everything has come up James Wade in the last 20 minutes. 60. Yeah, the shake of the head from Veinig tells its own story, and that could well be the final dart that he throws this week in Milton Keynes. Tops for James Wade. He's been fairly proficient on it so far today, and he's James fairly Wade. proficient on it once again as he wraps up a 6-1 victory. And when James Wade exits stage left, he will find out the news that it's good news elsewhere, but here and now James Wade has won 6-1. Yeah, and this is a little bit worrying as well for Steve Lennon because Kirchmar is already pressing ahead in this fourth leg as well and it's on the Lennon throw once again not quite down to a finish first but Lennon with work to do from 355 certainly that's more like it from Steve Lennon yeah good shift as well that second dart was a little bit precarious anyway just so. spotted a slight difference in the, the Lennon technique when he's drawing the dart backwards he used to stop but it seems to be one fluid motion these days 140. Well, 38 plays 76. He got a fancy Kirchmar now, though. 72. Well, frustration, and he's clearly setting himself high standards here because Kirchmar does not want to give anything away. Knows he can't afford to be charitable Get in shot. the slightest, and Steve Lennon ne never even questioned the idea of splitting that one straight onto double 19. And Lennon and is just under the 90 mark, which is not that different to what he's doing in this match. Whereas his Irish opponent is near 93. Those numbers are not bad. He's just not picking up enough wins. He's not winning the key battles. 180. Well, suddenly there's been a real injection of pace. So 180 and a 140 from Kirchmar earlier. Game shot. 109, though, check out for Boris Kirchmar just to reassert himself, just when it looked as though he might be wavering a little bit, just when it looked as though Steve Lennon might be about to make his move. Boris Kirchmar comes up with a devastating 109 check out. That match, which I think it lasted about 90 seconds, <laughs> he just went, oh, what am I supposed to do with that then? 60. If we had a World Cricket Championship in Steel Tip, Boris Kirchmar would be one of the favourites. Of that, there's no doubt. OK, well, let's... Uh, what do you want to campaign for? Cricket World Cup or darts in the Olympics? Cricket World Cup. OK. We'll, we'll run over that one first. This is more like it from Boris. 125. Bang on cue, he strays into the fives and isn't down to a finish yet. So, like I say, Lennon's not out of this, I don't think. Still, I think, has an opportunity. 134. Especially with a visit like that. Great chance to break throw here. 
Definite quality in this match now. There's a bit of urgency on both parts. 100. As there should be. Look at the standard going up, and they're very similar to what these guys have been doing all season long. Oh, double five for Lennon. 82. Uh, the finishing has let him down today. The doubles just haven't really happened on a consistent enough basis for Steve Lennon. He's missed so many opportunities. And Boris Kirchmar is now looking at 76 for a passage into round two, where he would face maybe the Blackpool-bound James Wade. Kirchmar, 76 for the match. So double 18. Get and it's checkmate Boris for Boris Kirchmar at the expense of Steve Lennon. A first round defeat yesterday for big bad Boris, but no mistake this time around, five successive 100. round one defeat. So there haven't been too many pro tour events this season where Usher has walked away with some prize money. Yeah, and sooner or later that is going to obviously have a big impact on 94. his on his career as a dance player. Game shot. Well, he's leveled things up and he's got the break of throw as well. One hundred and forty. That's beautiful from Anderson, it really is. One forty. Number three in this leg. One hundred. And this Actually, hasn't been a bad scoring leg from Gray Musher either, but yeah, he's nowhere near. And double 12 and double six for Gary Get Anderson shot. for a 12 darter. That's more like it from the Flying Scotsman, the former world champion. Now one away from a passage into the second round. And he can't find a treble there either. So real opportunity now for Gray Musher to take us into a decider. All of a sudden, he can't miss that treble 20 bet. And the whole complexion of this match has changed dramatically. 140. Away now, Graham Usher. 59. Doesn't need to be too aggressive either, although if he gets the opportunity, double Game 10. Shot. That is absolutely brilliant from Graham Usher. Where has this come from? A 140 checkout as well for good measure. That was a real feature of the 59. match in the early stages, straying into those fives and ones. Needs to get back in the saddle. Is there room for one more in there? 135. Not quite, but Gary Anderson really under the cosh all of a sudden. Needs something significant here. 174. And gets hit as well. Timely response from the champion that is Gary Anderson. Usher. 54. Just the three 18s, but he gets down to a gettable 80. But can Anderson find this 109? 69. No is the answer. And match dart comes and goes for Gary Anderson. Graham Usher steps in. Two clear darts for Game the match at double match. 10. Graham. And Graham Usher gets the better of Gary Anderson in an astonishing reversal of fortune, you have to say. Anderson led 5-3 in that one before that remarkable burst by Graham Usher. Leg nine was all important with the 11 data. A 12 data followed with the 140 checkout to level things up at five apiece. And he just about held it all together in the decider as well. Self-analysis as he's throwing the darts as well. Now, Sulovic can't finish from here, but he can apply some pressure. How much remains to be seen. It might not be that much. 60. Mm, could have been better. Matt Campbell, 60. 20 for tops. That's a good marker. It's gone a little bit high, of course, with that first one. 20. And the second one, there was no real adjustment. Topsy wants. Game yeah, shot. all about that second dart on the treble 16. Really good use of that treble 16 for Mensur. Now, Campbell, what's he got up his sleeve here? Yeah, again, the frustration is 94. clearly evident. Double 14. Man, 
62. So often it's been his saviour. So often it's been his salvation, but not on this occasion. Matt Campbell now stepping in for double 16. Game shot. And Matt Campbell really has got his shooting five. He's ignoring the 19s. He's staying upstairs on the 20s. 59. And he's not really been able to make an impression there either. Ninety-three. Campbell potentially two darts away. Sulovic needs a little bit more. Ninety-three. Well, here we go. Matt Campbell opportunity knocks here for a passage into the second round. Sixty-four points away. That leaves the bullseye, Game and shot. Matt and Campbell Matt finishes Matt things Campbell. off in style. Not for the first time today, he's found a bullseye finish as well, as was the case in the third leg, but a real injection of pace from Matt Campbell, a finalist on the Pro Tour in Hildesheim not too long ago, missed out on that occasion, but Campbell, who knows, may be in the mood for another deep run this uh, afternoon. It gave Ross Smith a, a bit of encouragement moving forward, and suddenly the draw, I mean, there was only three players left, and they were all challenged all players anyway, so, yeah, it, it would have been... An obvious favourite from that moment on. Still had loads to do, of course, in the final itself against Plaisier. Clayson looking good value here as well. He's uh, slightly behind, but he's got the darts. 100. And he's rattled in a 100 for good measure there as well. So Bartons needs to apply some pressure from here. Could do with a treble now. 50. Well, that's OK, but it you know, could have been a lot better. Yeah, it's a real chance, isn't it, for Johnny Clayton here to put a gap between them. Game and that's shot. what he does with a perfectly crafted checkout. The 120 taken with apparent ease. And the Welshman eases in to a 4-2 lead. There is once again a look of frustration on Andy Barton's face. And Clayton can take further giant strides towards the finish line here as well from 2 7 4. 180. And it's, yeah, looking ominous now, isn't it, Chris? Wasting no time. Clayton on 94 after 100. just three visits to the hockey. And it could be over after this visit. Well, 93, no damage done. He can still tidy up from here, but not from there. But uh, Clayton will return with Barton's 62. on 261. And it could well be a 13 dart for Johnny Clayton to finish things off. That first dart from Barton's has been the story of his match, especially 55. in the second half of this match as well. But Johnny Clayton for a passage into the third round. 14 darter will do it. Or well, maybe a 15 darter on double eight instead. And that's match. exactly Johnny how it's Clayton. come to pass. And Johnny Clayton, in all honesty, looked very, very comfortable indeed in that one. Very much the Johnny Clayton that we saw in the early stages yesterday as well. But maybe, just maybe this time, Johnny Clayton harboring genuine aspirations of going very deep in this player's championship 14. Well, a foregone conclusion that he would make it to Blackpool. And now it's almost there, as you say, Chris, there is this excitement. But I think he will want to go in there with something under his belt in terms of, you know, some match-winning competitive game time under his belt moving forward. He's been out 180'd by Hurrell in this game. Not yet from the youngster, but Hurrell has found three. Tops then for a 2-1 lead, and this would be Get a shot. third successive break of throw. So a strange start to this one. Hurrell with the early break, Littler hitting back straight away, and then Hurrell responding in kind, and there's more animation on the face of Luke Littler once again. Well, that could be that as far as this uh, leg is concerned. 21 from Hurrell, and uh, Littler looking to, well, I say pounce all over it, but two treble fives so far. Rescues that visit ever so slightly with the treble 20. Not totally convincing that from uh, Littler at all, when it was a real opportunity just to put his foot on the throat of James Hurrell. Hurrell, once 41. again, really struggling for points. And this could be a bit of a, a write-off as far as uh, he's concerned. That leaves tops. 98. And, yeah, similar gap in that um, dart below the trip double 20 as there was on the previous attempt in the previous leg. So... Not totally reassuring on the finishing from Littler in this one. He'll know that. He'll be well aware of that. He's got things to work on here. Grateful of the breathing Game space shot. then in this leg, but he does find that double ten. Needs to get the break back, though. But who will get there first? 
don't think, just by the way he's 99. going for certain shots, I don't think we're seeing the fully confident Luke Littler in this match yet. Those kind of finishes in the 100 teens, he often starts on the bullseye with the threat of some flamboyance. Bull single, bull type shot. 38 scored. 88 left, yeah. He is poised 43. here to level up this match and effectively take control of it. Of course, he would have the darts in the seventh leg. Eight. So 51 for double 16. Yeah, really, James. 81 away. So, I mean, he can still salvage this. Needs the treble 19. Gets it. Needs to focus now. Having given up on this after dart one, he's got double 12 for a 4-2 lead and a hold of throw. And he's 71. just underneath the wire. I, I just thought he lost a lot of momentum there. Having, you know, he, he, I think if he'd just gone on with it, he might have Game been shot. better off. But as it is, little of steps in, double four, and we're back on terms at three apiece. Yeah, it was really and then nearly, wasn't it, for James Hurrell? Narrowly missing that double 12. Littler taking effective control of the contest. 59. Below his high standards, obviously. That's, uh, I think, a fair assessment. 125. But, you know, I'm confident he'll, if he does lose this, he'll put things right and he'll head to Blackpool as a very strong contender indeed at the world match play, even though it will be his 55. first crack at the second biggest prize in the sport. 155 here for Hurrell. Yeah, I'm actually interested to see who the bookies will make the favourite once the final events have been played 60. and how much of, of an impact an, an event like today might have on those odds. Yeah, I mean, so it's, uh, sooner or later they're going to have to follow the money and I think there will be a lot of money for Luke Littler, but yeah, I, I, I think initially they'll mark down Humphreys as the, as the favourite. How overwhelming a favourite remains to be seen. Three, Three scored, yeah. Well, it's another situation like we've seen a few times where he's missed the first dart, could still do it, but sort of distracted himself. Well, throwing for the match there with 95, and he finds only 21, 62, so just under the wire for the bullseye for Littler, 46. and he's off target with that attempt as well. And is that the last dart that Littler throws in Milton Keynes this week? We'll find out soon enough. Just inside for 20 and tops here for Hurrell for a 6-3 win and a passage into the Game third round the and Luke Game Littler top. suffers another early exit a round one defeat yesterday for the multiple title winner and for the 17 year old it's a round two defeat in this one as well he heads to Blackpool not quite in the form that he would have liked but certainly will head to the Winter Gardens as one of the favourites in a 6-1 victory over Ryan Searle who himself averaged more than 105 can confirm that Callan Rids will not be going to Blackpool. No, it's he six. has been beaten by the world number one, Luke Humphrey, 6-4, ending his bid to make it to the match play. 41. So 1-2-1 one, one for Aspinall to take the lead. The bullseye beckons. Game shot. And that is the complete contrast to the end of the previous leg. Nobody could hit a double on the outer ring. One dart at the ball, no problem at all. 100. Game oh, shot. Where has he found that? Well, the same place, I suppose, that he found the 1 2 1. There was a lot of movement on the follow through after that dart had been released there. 134. Nathan I'm not sure whether that was just him reacting, whether it was an involuntary reaction with the injury that he's clearly 94. suffering. You can see the, the arm heavily strapped up. This leg might be gone, but he's not the kind 55. of player ever to give in in any leg, in any match. 64. 
relatively smart Dead thinking shot. in case things went wrong for Hempel. But it all goes down to the final leg. Hundred and thirty-four. Sixty. Forty-six. Well, he will return here, Nathan Aspinall. Just looking a little frustrated, but there's not too much to worry about yet. In fact, there's nothing to worry about at all. Game shot and the match, Nathan Aspinall. And Aspinall does finally get the job done against Florian Hempel, the pair. Share an embrace. Humphreys. Is still in, but he hasn't won one remarkably. If Gabriel Clemens wins this one, it would be a total 49. game change of his season. And for that remarkable record of 18 straight world match play appearances for James Wade. 135. Maybe important he gets this leg, you know. No score. And he hasn't. So all those misses give Martin Schindler a chance to kind of make the start to this match irrelevant for Clemens because if Schindler hits here, he breaks back. And then he would be throwing for 2-2. Two -two. And Get he has hit uh, Andy Bolton. But since then, he's only dropped two legs. That was 11 legs that first match. 6-5 in Hetter's favour. Since then, 6-2 over Ryan Meikle. 78. And 6-0 over both Jeffrey de Graff and Robert Owen. Schindler has six darts here. One hundred and thirty five. Johnny Clayton has now joined Hetta in the quarterfinals, a six two win against an opponent averaging one hundred and eleven for Clayton. Dom Taylor averaged one hundred and ten point seven one, only got two legs. Game shot. Martin Schindler is two legs ahead, having won the last four. One hundred. Schindler two away. Well, a bit of drama in that other game. Luke Humphreys was on 48 for the match. Ended up somehow busting his score. And Menzies wants 108 to win that one. And he's taken it. Hey, Cameron Menzies is through. He's beaten Luke Humphreys. He's knocked out the last two world champions in his last two matches and kept the dream alive. The Scotsman's through to the quarterfinals and potentially could be going to Blackpool. James Wade will have to wait. Even if Clemens can't turn this around, there is still a man threatening to steal a spot away from the machine. Clemens' race may be run. Clemens race is run, Martin Schindler. beaten by his teammate, and that defeat <laughs> confirms that Gabriel Clemens will not be playing at the World Match Play in 2024. Schindler, who will be seizing... Damon just wants to be the first person to win two players' championships this year. And that might just ease the 58. pain of a somewhat early exit at the World Cup with Simon Whitlock. Not just like yesterday, we've got some amazing stories. We'll get into those in a bit of detail in the next leg because Damon Hetter might be equalizing here with a biggie. And because he isn't, Cameron Menzies can stretch his legs a little bit. 140. Double 16. Game shot. Leg stretching starts. Yeah, brilliant from the Scot that he doesn't know about. He's currently in a spot for the World Grand Prix. 
He's doing his season an awful lot of good with everything he throws like that. Well, this is incredible. Just think about the the pathway through to this stage. Menzies battling that last leg decided win against Luke Humphries that Paul described the start of this game. Hits her on that incredible winning streak. Not losing a leg for the best part of three matches. Yet here he is, 3 0 down and about to go 4 0 down. Johnny Clayton's in a good spot against Schindler, 3 1 up. Plazier, 2 1 up on Graham Usher. That looks like a bit of an attritional one. And I've been quite kind about that. Ryan Joyce, though, 4 1 up on Josh Rock. He's gone bananas. Over 110 average for five legs. Game shot. Speaking of bananas. This result is a little bit like that. It'll be 5 0 Menzies. You would suspect yes, because he's got two visits. He's not sure what to do here. He's thinking 25, and now he's gone to 19s. Double 16. Sixty-five. What I like about that is that he did make his mind up and he didn't go half heartedly. At the treble 19 in the end. 138. A little bit of pressure applied, but this is as close as Damon Hett has been getting, leaving something while he stands back and watches Cameron Menzies hit. Game and he hits shot. again for a 5 0 lead. What if he does know what's at stake? And this is a man who can deal with pressure. One of two things is going to happen. 100. This is going to be a temporary reprieve, potentially. Or we're going to see the mother of all comebacks in a players' championship. Can he leave 164? 60. The fact that he can't gives Hetter the chance of using 20s on this 126. Ninety-four. If I may wax lyrical about these quarterfinals, though, full credit to the world of darts for what we're seeing because seven different countries in the final 100. eight. 20 years ago, that didn't happen. Maybe even 10 years ago, that didn't happen. Hetter gets his first real opportunity in this game. Might have to hit it. Game shot. Well, he had to wait a long time to get any darts at doubles. Big fish, little fish. Anyone got a cardboard box? 96. This is a match winning chance now. Great marker for the 60. And it's the bullseye, his first match dart. And it Eight. wires it. Well, I think it hit Hetter on the way back. A brutal bounce out right off the wire. As Paul Nicholson noted alongside me. Damon Hetter is creeping back into this game. game oh, and he shot. nails tops. And that seed of doubt may now have been planted. Everything was going the way of Cameron Menzies for the first five legs of this match. Doesn't seem to have affected him too much, mind. Nothing affects him. That would have crippled a lot of players mentally. Seven maximums in this match from Cameron. Should be on 181 here. 140. 41 remaining for Menzies when he comes back. Damon Hetter on 302, which is why he's starting on the 18s. 92. So it is 41 for Cameron Menzies to make the semi finals. Double 16. 9. He can't get much closer. Hetter's a long way behind. 210. He's on. No finish. Might be on one. Quite small. 98. Another moment for Menzies. Double 16 to win this game by six legs to three. Game and on his fifth match, match start, he Menzies. does make his way to the final four. 
and James Wade is still sweating. But Menzies is still dreaming of winning this title. Another fantastic display, and he is getting better as the day goes on. Finally, he'll draw James Wade at the match play. Has moved up, hasn't he, in the rankings as a result of this run today. A couple of places to eighth in the world. 57. Moving himself into the same quarter as the world number one, of course. Whether that's a good or a bad thing depends on that result, if that match indeed happens. Somebody 72. else is on double three now. And it's probably a harder double for Plazier than it is for Ryan Joyce. We saw the way that he laid down a dart below it and used it. Caressing it in off the barrel. Plazier doesn't have that luxury. Really has to attack it. 94. But the problem for him is then if he then needs one double one, he's going to block double one as well. Pretty much has to hit first dart Game and shot. does. When you're as confident as Wesley is. Ross said as much afterwards, he just could not get rid of him. He would not go away. When you're playing this well, you keep playing, no matter what happens today. He'll not be having a break over the summer. He'll be playing darts wherever he wants. Well, it's starting to look like Cameron Menzies' bold, brave dart Blackpool bid may be coming to an end. Johnny Clayton leads 5-1. Here, Wesley Plazier Game shot. leads 4-2 with the aid of a superb 116 finish. You get the feeling that Wes is starting to warm up here. Luke Littler, like Josh Rock, like Gary Anderson, like Kian Van Veen, like Martin Schindler. My yeah, word. We'll look forward to that. Even James Wade himself. 100. You wouldn't want him in a first round in Blackpool with the record he's got there. Not at all. Right, then how about a spot of fishing? One. Oh, how about a bit of Shanghai? Gonna go the conventional route. We did have the temptation of three double tops, but not many people in this room would have done that. 100. So who blinks first? Is this gonna be a double break for Wesley Plazier? He needs the ball. He doesn't get redemption on the ball after what happened at the start of the match, but Ryan Joyce can inch towards him. Joyce was having a little smirk Game to shot. himself then. I think he thought he was going to go, but he does manage to cling to the coattails of the Dutchman. They want to have a title. They want to leave this place as the last person standing. I right, get ready for the reaction. 180. Mm, something's going on here. And the official Owen Binks might have a little more on his mind than just the dartboard. <laughs> Joyce gives it back. <laughs> Told you he's walking close to him. He's trying to make sure he knows the presence is felt. I think they're both enjoying this. How much is Ryan enjoying that, though? Well, Very much, because if this goes in, hold on to your hats. I wouldn't be surprised if a word was had at the end of this leg. Not sure they're doing anything too wrong. They're both... Engaged in it, aren't they? It's not like one's really upsetting the other. I think you're right. I think they're both enjoying it. Probably the only fault is sort of standing on the hockey while their opponent's approaching for a little bit too long. Joyce only needs to break him once. Why has Ryan started on 19s on 301? That has got me befuddled. Lazier is in the box seat here. Six starts from 201. We'll get the job done to play against the ferret in the final. 130. Happy enough with himself. He could be going to back to back finals here. Let's keep your eyes on the pair at the end of the match. If there's any 100. real tension between them, that will be seen when the winning double is hit. I get the sense of enjoyed a good battle. Maybe wrong. Let's see. To do it again. Game shot and the match. And Wesley Pazia does the double. Well, there was no eye contact between the pair of them. Not sure where that little bit of needle came from in that game.
Pazir was giving it large. Joyce was returning those reactions, but it is Wesley Pazir who's through to the final for the second consecutive day. Doesn't even hold a professional tour card, but it's back-to-back -back finals at Players' Championships 13 and 14. Which would pretty much guarantee him top half of the rankings going into Minehead. And that's without five. playing again this season. Yeah. And I suspect if he does, then there's every chance that he'll pick up even more money because on the evidence of this, you know, there's no reason to suggest that this is not a flash in the pan. Clearly, he's done it twice in one week. And, you know, it's, it's clearly not a flash in the pan. And I think he's got the capabilities. We've seen it time and time again beforehand as well, even before this weekend, especially with darts like this. Just inside the wire for a double eight. That would have been a one three six checkout for Wesley. Johnny Clayson getting away with it. 61 is the target here. Double 18. Game shot. And Johnny Clayson edges back in front at 2-1. We've had three holes of throw so far in this final, but you could easily make a case that it could have been three legs that could have gone either way. 81. Considering who Wesley's played over the last few weeks, the fact that he's won 20 games from 21 is quite remarkable. 140. Being today, he's been very calm, very serene, but yeah, already in this final. I mean, two one up, going with the throw and 25. Just heard a few mutterings from Johnny, clearly not settled in this one just yet. He knows it's a long format, or should I say, a longer format? 140. He does have a signature shot, and this is it. Bullseye. 96. Almost classic Johnny Clayton. And he might find himself all tied up again. Yeah, that was the opportunity just to establish a little bit of daylight. Well, OK. <laughs> Having to uh, readjust for double eight. 56. The best 25 converter Game in the shot. world. And he does it again for 3-1. Playing it. I'll tell you who loves Johnny Clayton right now, though. That's James Weird. <laughs> I've already made a prediction, Rob. 140. When the match play draw is done, Johnny Clayton's going to get weird. Yeah, something we touched upon earlier, that the irony of... Yeah, the beneficiary... 40. ...getting that sort of draw. But, yeah, these sort of things, I mean, you can't plan too intricately, can you? about landing in a particular half of the draw by enhancing your seeding. 58. It's just the way the uh, format is, and it's part and parcel of the way the uh, setup is applied for each major tournament that comes along on the TV. Yeah, it's a, it's a byproduct. Nobody thinks about sections of draws when they're playing matches like this, especially finals. Game shot. Wesley Plazier right now, all he's thinking about is desperately trying to get in touch with the ferret. championships for the rest of the year otherwise there are going to be four people ahead of him of the next block yeah. which is in Milton Keynes in four weeks Danny Jansen Christian Kist who has made a final without a tour card before Andy Bolton and Connor Scott will get calls before he does well I don't think Ply Zero will mind coming back to Milton Keynes if this is uh, anything to go by he'll clearly attach a lot of 55. sentimental value to this particular venue uh, I think you know you look at what he's picked up in prize money this weekend, potentially £25,000 as Johnny Clayton wraps in a, a fifth leg on the scoreboard. You know, £5,000 or so on the challenge tour. I mean, his bank balance has been swelled and that will just give him that comfort zone. He could do with a few more of those to get in touch. He's three behind now and Clayton, even after playing a lot of darts himself over the last couple of years, he looks fresh. Not a bead of sweat on that brow. And he is bustling around the booth right now. Yeah, it's all very neat and tidy from Johnny Clayton. He's been 60. under, or he was under a little bit of pressure, I thought, in the early stages of this final. We said about the first three legs could have easily flipped the other way, but I think he's he's really taken control of this situation now. 100. I mean, he's not uh, uh, nowhere near totally satisfied with his own game. He's, he's, he, he still clearly feels as though he's got lots of improvements to come, but 
I think all in all, it'll be happy unless players here can find this 1-6-1. I would not rule it out given the form of what Game he did shot. yesterday and to some extent today as well. And Wesley plays here with a 1-6-1 checkout. It's only a hold of throw, but my goodness me, that will give him a huge amount of confidence moving forward in the rest of this final. Clayton was on 1-2-1 one, one, to widen the gap even more. Big moment. 180. But Johnny Clayton will be thinking, OK, Wesley can have his moment with his 161. Let's make sure it counts for nothing. Let's put those building blocks in place in the next leg. Let's make sure we just preserve that advantage and that three leg cushion that he's worked so hard to carve out here. And he's certainly going the right way about it. That is a brilliant piece of approach play by Johnny Clayton to leave a crack at double eight. Plies here all of a sudden. That 161 seems like a long time ago now. Time is 61. running out. Clayton is one dart away from being two legs away. And there it Gate is. Shot. It's irrelevant about the fact that Plazier didn't even leave a finish there on 165. There's great respect between the two, obviously. I mean, who doesn't respect Johnny Clayton? Who doesn't love Johnny Clayton? But love that 11 darter, everybody will, apart from Wesley. Yeah, just a, a touch of class from uh, Johnny Clayton, both with the darts that he's thrown and also the... The etiquette as well that he's uh, displayed in this final 97. as well. Would you rather have 127 or 102? I'd rather be Plazia in this moment. Yeah, I would as well, yeah. And he's missed well, this single. Well, not now, yeah. That's criminal from Plazia. I mean, it's all well and good chucking 161 checkouts to give yourself a shot in the arm, but you need to do the bread and butter as well and stick to the basics. 70. Well, a rare slip up on double 16. And I know he's been good on those double 16, double eight combinations, but yeah, it's a question now for Clayson as to whether he'll return. I suppose there's no massive damage done if Plazier does take this out because it is, again, just a hold of throw and there's no guarantees that he will anyway. And yeah, he's come inside. And I just had a feeling that Plazier might just labor with that one as we get down to the business end of this final. Clayson on double 16. And as sure as night follows day, no mistake whatsoever with that attempt. And Clayton is now one away from a first title since May of last year. There's no such thing as academic in darts. 100. You have to go through the tape or get the final shot hit. And it could well be the same case in the final as well. And Johnny Clayton is just taking giant stride after giant stride towards this title. 81 points away after nine darts. Wesley can do nothing about it. 180. That might be the last three darts he throws here in Milton Keynes this week. Johnny Clayson, 81 points. That leaves 62. That leaves a crack at the bullseye. What a way to 56. sign off that would have been for Johnny Clayson. The agony goes on. Does Plazier get a shot at the bullseye? He must hit this. If he doesn't, he will lose. He hasn't Game lost shot. yet, though. That is gargantuan from a very big statured player. My word, that took guts. Although, yeah, on the Plazier throw, more to come maybe though for Johnny. Well, Steady. now Plazier's got 122. 107. Clayton's left himself on a double after nine. If Plazier hits this, Clayton's going to be dizzy. What a piece of approach play that was, though, by Johnny Clayson. But Wesley Plaisier needs to come up with the goods here. Needs to find what he found before. And he's found it again. A 1-2-1 one, one checkout, backed up by the 1-2-2. And Wesley Plaisier keeps himself going and keeps himself alive in what is fast turning out to be a pretty enthralling final after all. It looked very one-way traffic just, what, five minutes ago or so. But all of a sudden, Plaisier has developed other ideas, Paul Nicholson. This final is not over yet. Johnny Clayton's had a match dart. He's missed it. It was on the bullseye in leg 11. Will he get another opportunity here in leg 13? Or will Wesley Plaisier... 98. ...make life difficult once again? 113 is what he's looking at if he returns. And he will return. 89. Anybody think... That three ton plus finishes in a row is possible in a final? It is possible. Not three in a row, and Johnny Clayton gets his reprieve.
took out 113 yesterday, didn't he, to force the issue with Ross Smith. It didn't pay off on this occasion. Double 16, though, for Johnny Game Clayson. And, and Johnny Clayson, Johnny I think, Clayton. will be breathing a bit of a sigh of relief after that one. A lovely embrace between the pair after what has been a terrific final and a terrific, terrific performance by Johnny Clayson. Wesley Plies here <laughs> certainly playing his part, as he did yesterday. What a week it's been for him. £20,000 he walks away from Milton Keynes in his back pocket. But for Johnny Clayton, it's a first title since May of last year. He's back in the winner's circle. He wins it by eight legs to five.